Hello, everybody. I'm Zias Caravalla, Principal Analyst with ZK Research, and I'm here doing another eWeek eSpeaks. Uh, and I'm uh, delighted today to be joined by Graham Geddes, uh, head of Zoom Phone and Zoom Room. Say hello, Graham. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, Zoom has uh, been a phenomenal com company. Uh, I, I think Zoom had a good head start pre-pandemic, and then the pandemic came, and of course, it became a household term. Uh, uh, one of the things I find fascinating now is meet you on Zoom and things like that. Zoom's become a verb, and it's one of the you know, kind of cooler sector companies. So you must be really excited to work there. Um, yeah, now, I, go ahead. I was just going to say it's been, uh, it's been a wild ride for sure. Um, I would say that you know, we find ourselves in a very fortunate spot to be able to help our customers and really you know, kind of across the globe uh, keep people connected. So it's, been, you know, it's definitely been a really interesting uh, previous 10 months. Well, almost unprecedented to ride in a lot of ways. So now you are the head of Zoom Room and Zoom Phone and Zoom Phone is an interesting product because uh, everybody knows Zoom is this, right? It's a meeting platform. Um, you see it used all the time. Uh, people do social things on it. They have uh, the watch NFL games on it. You know, the draft is done on it, things like that. Um, but now there's this thing called Zoom Phone. So, um, you know, why does Zoom want to be in phones? Uh, it seems like for years, everybody's been saying the phone's dead. In fact, people ask me that all the time. Is, is the phone dead? I always say, no, there's a lot of room. But I'm curious, why, why does Zoom want to be in phones? And what exactly is a Zoom Phone? Yeah, so, uh, you know, kind of taking the first part of the question of, of the why, um, what I'll say, you know, very, you know, very much at the core of Zoom is being extremely customer centric. And so really the why is our customers were asking for us to help them. Um, and you know, we've seen broad adoption on the Zoom platform from a meetings perspective where, you know, companies really have embraced video centric communications and they're doing it at scale to the, you know, tens of hundreds of millions of minutes per month. Uh, yet they still had right that PBX, their phone system, sitting in the basement, uh, you know that they were kind of paying maintenance on, and it wasn't, con you know, there was there really wasn't, you know, UC right or unified communications uh, tying the two together. And so our customers were asking for us if we could help solve that problem for them of really unifying voice and video into a single stack. Um, when you look at it, right, it's not just the, the trivial ask of doing that, but also, I mean, it opens up a lot of future innovation possibilities when, when we do those. So, so yeah, so, uh, you know, Zoom phone really, you know, was from the inception created to help our customers consolidate their communications stacks. Um, and what is Zoom phone? It, it is truly an enterprise class cloud phone system or PBX replacement. Um, and you know, we have had broad success and adoption on the platform. Uh, customers across you know, almost every single different vertical from retail, manufacturing, healthcare, uh, education, and customers of all sizes too. Right? So one of the things that's unique about Zoom is customers you know, from a 10 employee company all the way up to the, the largest of the Fortune 50 uh, and that are also embracing this kind of convergence of voice and video into a single platform. Now, Zoom Phone isn't anything, it's not something new or some skunk work project, right? It's actually pretty big. I think from the last uh, Zoomtopia, your CEO, Eric Yuan, uh, the number, I believe, half a million phone seats sold. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. So over uh, uh, 500,000 seats sold in the previous 12 months, uh, you know, that we disclosed from a financial kind of analyst perspective, uh, broad adoption, over 5,800 customers, over 10 employees or more. Uh, and we're seeing not just seats sold for us, it's really about the utilization and making sure that customers are adopting and loving the product. And so we've seen, in, along with that, we've seen an eight-fold increase in traffic on the platform uh, just from a phone perspective. Okay, so let's say I buy into the thesis that I should be able to get my communications meetings uh, from one company. Um, uh, so why should I choose Zoom? Obviously, you're the video company and you're trying to sell me phone. There's lots of phone companies that are not trying to sell me video. You know, what, what, what do you think gives you the advantage there? Yeah, and I think it's, it's really this transition, and especially in light of what we've seen with, you know, kind of the, the global pandemic, you know, it has exacerbated it. But, you know, this question of is the future going to be more, uh, more video, more video centric or less? And I think we've really seen, you know, for those of us that have been in the industry for a long time, we've always called that next year is going to be the year of video. Yeah. But I think, you know, it's, it's finally come, you know, come to pass. And so um, what I would say is architecturally, it's, you know, it's one thing right, to, to design. And we, we've really designed from the end state in mind. 
So if you really subscribe to the fact that the future is going to be more video enabled, right? It's very easy to work our way backward. Video is CPU intensive, it's bandwidth intensive, and Zoom's really solved from an architecture perspective to be able to do video flawlessly at scale. And so when you look at voice, you know, it's as simple as if I turn off my camera, we are having a voice call. And so it's really afforded us the opportunity to, you know, expand and help solve a need for our customers while leveraging the same infrastructure that we already had built. Um, but the same isn't true if you take a different perspective. If you're starting from UC, you know, from a telephony perspective, trying to add or bolt on video is very difficult. Uh, and so when you do that, the architecture has to change. Uh, typically there's shortcuts and bolt-ons being made. And so it, it leaves a little bit, you know, from a, an end user perspective, it's not as seamless and simple. Simple, And then also from an administrative perspective, right? It's, it's very complex to try to support and manage. So, you know, the, the real reason for Zoom Phone is just the ability to, you know, Zoom's known, you know, of it just works and it's simple. Uh, and really the ability to, to extend that uh, kind of you know, approach into the telephony world is, has really been resonating with our customers. All right. So I guess I can sum up thinking about the, th the same architecture that people meet happy will also let them call happy. And, there you go. Uh, and and uh, in fact, before I was an analyst, I was actually a network engineer and I can attest to the fact that, um, uh, you know, when we first started deploying voice over IP, we, we thought it would be a big problem, but Voice doesn't draw, drive a lot of bandwidth. It, it's a surprisingly low amount. Now it needs to be very low latency and jitter free, but the bandwidth things aren't that much. Video is a whole different animal. Uh, you know, if not done correctly, you can you can really have a lot of problems with video. And disruptive video is, is very tough to have. In fact, it's better to not have video uh, than have it be poor or something. Yeah, and I actually think that's one of the reasons why we see so much success with Zoom Phone, because when you think about it, just from a telephony perspective, you know, not many customers are waking up saying, I want to switch telephony providers, right? It, it's kind of, you know, one of those things that you, you don't, you know, you don't mess with it. Uh, but the fact that our customers, you know, know and trust Zoom to deliver excellent and flawless video and voice, right, at scale, kind of gives them that confidence. They know that the architecture has already been there and designed to support it. Things like VoIP, right, and, and you know, the, the high fidelity audio quality that you already have from Zoom. And so it's really broken down that barrier for our customers to, to kind of get started from a Zoom phone perspective. Yeah, I guess the other convergence that's going on here is just meetings and calls. Like, um, you know, there, there's really a little difference today between a meeting and a call. Like we can, we can call this a call, call a meeting, but all in all, it, at the end of the day, it's kind of the same thing, correct? Yeah, and I actually think that that's one of the areas where it's going to be really fun to continue to push the industry and innovate. Uh, you know, frankly, in the past, uh, you know, some of the players in the industry have had, you know, everyone has solutions on both sides of voice and video, but, you know, they really have kind of bolted together approach. And so what I think that real, really the power is, is for our ability to blur the lines between the two. So that to your point, right? I, I don't know if, if I'm making a phone call or a, if it's a meeting, right? At the end of the day, you can seamlessly switch modalities from you know, phone to meetings to even you know, rooms and conference room spaces. Um, and so you know, we've actually been taking you know, some of the telephony types of features uh, and moving them into the meetings and the video paradigm, uh, which is really exciting to see. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Zoom Rooms, and uh, I wanted to touch on that as well. Um, now, you guys have had rooms for a little while, and for a company that, you know, taglines meet happy, um, uh, the feedback I had from some customers, you know, a year or two ago around Zoom Rooms is, is it wasn't exactly simple to set up. There was a lot of tables. There was a lot of vendors I had to bring in, things like that. So it wasn't turnkey uh, like, like we're used to Zoom being. So what what's new with Zoom Rooms? And, you know, just uh, tell us what's... Uh, you know, how you've evolved that product to make it easier. Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, early on in the Zoom Room evolution, you know, is really about flexibility for our customers, giving them the ability to meet the changing needs of their different environments. And it was kind of a build your own approach. Um, as I mentioned, you know, really listening to the kind of the voice of the customer and customers asking and saying, look, you know, for a large majority of my spaces, I just, I'm looking for turnkey. I'm looking for simple. Uh, and so last year you saw, we uh, launched our Zoom Room appliances. Uh, and this is where it's kind of everything together, uh, hardware, software, cloud managed. And you can go from unboxing a Zoom Room appliance to fully installed and operational in a matter of minutes. 
uh, and there's you know very little needed right to get started. And so you know we've seen a, a lot of success uh, and really a kind of a shift to that modality for the majority of Zoom rooms. Yeah, in fact, I know the um, the your partner Neat uh, dot I dot and I know the team. In fact, I've been familiar with OJ and uh, and team for a long time, and uh, I can tell you that um, historically that group of people has made outstanding video devices all the way back to the Canberra days. So you've certainly got a great partner there. So uh, now, uh, so thanks for the explanation on Zoom Rooms. Uh, we're coming up near the end of the time and I want you to put your prognosticator hat on. We're at the end of 2020 and I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you to uh, give us a prediction for what do you think is coming in 2021? We had a tumultuous 2020 to say the least. So what do we have to look forward to? Yeah, I think, you know, it's one of those things where I would say that in 2021, we'll, we'll probably continue to see, you know, I, I think the genie's out of the bottle and we're not going back to the way it was before. Uh, I think really what we're going to see is a lot of the predictions of the market will either continue to accelerate or, or truly come true. Um, you know, we're seeing broad adoption of video that we've never seen before. Uh, we're seeing really this, you know, true convergence of voice and video into a single platform and customers really putting weight behind those decisions, um, you know, and kind of voting with their dollars, so to speak. Um, you know, we've called the, the move to soft phone for a number of years. Um, you know, those knowledge workers that have, have really clung to the hard phone device. And, you know, we absolutely support those needs and use cases, but, you know, amidst the pandemic, people went home and they found that, you know, soft phone was a great technology. Uh, and that, that, that they've adopted at scale. And so I think we'll continue to see some shift there as well. Uh, and then from a, a room's perspective, you know, I, I would say that, you know, really you're going to see the, the room, a lot, of, a lot more intelligence from a room perspective of, you know, giving the administrator the tools they need to manage their spaces. And whether that be, uh, you know, telemetry into the actual room itself, you know, whether it be, you know, counting number of participants or, you know, the ambient temperature or are the lights on and really, you know, better partnerships and you know, giving visibility to folks like facilities managers. Uh, so I think there's a lot of white space in the room side as well. Yeah, well, that's great. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I want to echo what you said on, on, the, on the soft phone and even the software based meetings and things, you know, it's, it's interesting that pre pandemic, very few people, I wouldn't say very few, but we like, maybe two thirds of people I did video calls with like this, Zoom calls, they wouldn't turn their video on, right? And uh, now because we went through this pandemic, everybody tried soft phones and video and things like that again and realized the experience is pretty good. So we can continue to work that way. So I'm actually really encouraged about what I've seen in 2020, the way people have shifted their work styles. And I think we're in for you know a pretty bright future in this space. So um, I wanna thank you, Graham, for spending the, the this time with us. I think, um, uh, you know, for those of you watching who are Zoom customers, uh, just be aware of Zoom phones coming, and uh, it's it's something to take a look at. I've actually played around with it myself, and it's a it's a good product. So yeah, I would uh, say it's it's not coming; it's here, right? So yeah. uh, so we're we're excited about it. Well, I mean, to more customers, yes, right? Yeah, so it, it, it's for it's for real. So, uh, anyways, thank you, Graham. I'm Zias Caravella from ZK Research and E Week, and have a great rest of your evening. Thanks for joining us on E Week eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.